Etho had dug a hole. It was this like a uh, uh, foreshadowing thing where you and him were together. He dug a hole. He said, uh, people yeah. fall down my holes and die. At the very end of that episode, you fell down that hole and died. And what's crazy is yeah. when you fell into it, a tenth of a second before you fell, you said, okay, now what I need to do is, and then you died, you're all, die. I need to die. And that was the hole that he had <laughs> dug. I was like, dude, no yeah. way that came full circle. <laughs> Yeah, I literally, and it gave me such a good cold end to the episode as well. I just ended it on a Ito! Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, back with uh, part two. Martin, again, thank you so much for joining us, man. It's just, it's uh, great having you here. And, and it's Thank you so much. It's been really fun. This first hour was a blast. Yeah. It, literally, you said it was an hour in. I was like, it feels like 20, 25. Like it just yeah. is yeah. zoomed it just by. flies by. I mean, we have like a, a recording device in front of us. It's like constantly ticking the time. So we can just look at it and be like, okay, yeah, we're a minute in or, or 30 minutes in or whatever. And I looked out and I'm like, mm. ooh, we crossed an hour. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. And then even in between, so we took a little break, a little bio break, and and then Martin and I just started talking and joking about, you know, past recordings, and all, all of a sudden we're both cracking up. I'm like, hey, stop. We got yeah. to do this. That, that's, why, that's why Skiz and I, we started doing this, this like pre-podcast recording stream for our supporters on Glimpse because – a lot of times we'd be like setting up for the podcast and we'd be like telling stories and talking to each other and cracking each other up. And we're just like, save it for the camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We so just always have that kind of like fly on the wall just yeah, there. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Right. And we have that a lot in, in like the life series where Discord before, you know, we start a recording session or during the, the halftime break that we do that we're yeah. all on a call together and like some of the funniest things happen. In fact, Skiz, I think you shared already on the podcast the time that you kind of shocked the life series uh peeps with something that you said in, in, <laughs> in discord do you remember the story i do remember the story uh and, and it was uh it was season one do i am i gonna tell this again you're gonna so, tell it again yeah. i don't care if everybody's heard it's good yeah. enough to i mean martin's got to relive it yeah this, with I, us. and this was another introduction because this is when martin and i were this we had only filmed one session and so mm -hmm. we were we were about to film session two and uh, I was still trying to get a feel, you know, I'm the small, I'm the small fry in the server and I'm just trying to get a feel for where we stand and what rules are what I can't figure it out. And uh, Green and Scar own the desert. If you remember that from that first season, right? They own yeah, the, the desert. desert duo. Yeah. And I wanted to go get some sand. I wanted a lot of sand, but I wasn't going to go just take it. I'm going to try to play by the rules. I'm going to go and see what kind of negotiations. And I just, I couldn't have been more shunned. I, I just, it was so <laughs> weird. And I was like, what am I supposed to do here? I didn't, couldn't figure it out. So then in one of our meetings, when we weren't filming at all in the meeting, I said, so what are, like, what are the rules? I, I can't quite figure this out. Cause I know we should make deals, but I said, I, I went to the desert to talk to green and scar. And, uh, and I asked to make a deal for sand. I was basically told to go myself and do the whole the whole discord just lit up like a christmas tree people just started laughing so hard and i was and as soon as everybody laughed that hard i was like that was a that was yeah. a line i crossed and it and it worked uh, fine you know? i think that's why it's so funny is because like we just got out of this section of like we're content creators we're family friendly we're not saying stuff like that and then we're in a break yeah. and and you don't always flip the switch immediately when you're off camera. Nah. And so we're still kind of thinking in this like family friendly space and suddenly Skiz drops an F-bomb to 15 <laughs> people that he just met. And like, <laughs> it's like, whoa, okay. It was good. I think I always do that. I and mean, I can't even think of an example right now, but I know for a fact, one of my favorite things to do in any collaboration is we'll have moments that will happen in the Discord. And then when we get into game, I'll allude to that moment in some way in recording, knowing they can't break character or like knowing they'll get their reference, but won't be able to say anything back to it. Like, yeah. they know what I'm talking about. And they'll, you'll hear a little giggle or a little smirk or something like that. And it's, I love doing that stuff to people. It's great. You know, speaking of the fact that we talked about this last time, how this is, you just cannot script what we do uh, on the live series. Mm -hmm. and, and you had mentioned Martin that like life series, probably more than anything in regards to how like crazy it is on how things work out. And there's just no way we could script that. I would say the one moment that it was obviously not scripted, but if I was a viewer and I didn't work in this world, I'd be like, bull crap. There's no way that that just so happened. And it was where Etho had dug a hole. It was this like a uh, uh, foreshadowing thing where you and him were together. He dug a hole. He said, oh, people yeah. fall down my holes and die. At the very end of that episode, 
you fell down that hole and died. And what's crazy is yeah. when you fell into it, a tenth of a second before you fell, you said, okay, now what I need to do is, and then you died, you're all, die. I need to die. And that was the hole that he had dug. <laughs> I was like, dude, no yeah. way that came full circle. <laughs> yeah. I literally, and it gave me such a good cold end to the episode as well. I just ended it on a, it was a real like <laughs> meddling kids kind yeah. of vibe. That's so funny. Yeah. But again, that's one of those moments, isn't it? Like you were saying with the replay mod, you can use it to give context and like capture your footage from yes. later on yes. or in post-production it gives you that flexibility over live format stuff where you can go oh hey remember this thing because they might not have remembered it at all but kind of reaffirming that just makes it so much sweeter and like it just became one of those things that became fan art and like you know people just run with it they, they love those silly little yeah. spontaneous moments of just nuts chaos Speaking yeah you know there was there was one in uh last life where i i swear this is when i when i really got to know how quick martin was yeah and that was when we started the aha bit right oh my god and, <laughs> and so aha it, it started we started making words out of it well mainly martin and and you know i'm just sitting back just laughing like like trying to come up with something the entire time I'm like i can't come up with anything half as funny the the thing was you had done so many and they just kept progressively getting funnier and funnier that like you physically got ill during that segment oh, do you remember dude i was beat red i can't i don't think i did face cam that season but my face was beat red and i was genuinely laughing so hard that i i was like milliseconds from passing out i had to like <laughs> sit back in my chair and just <laughs> ma manually breathe for a moment because i was just so overwhelmed by how ridiculous they were oh, yeah. um, and then you just have you or mumbo just because it was kind of me and green riffing for the most part but then you and mumbo would just chip one in every so yeah. often it just catches off guard and it just would explode just again it was... it. like as soon as you thought that fire was out there's just something that would reignite it and and uh Finally, you're like, no more. You you were done. You were like, we are done with this. You you, you, you like, we could tell in your voice, like you couldn't handle it anymore. And then you, yeah. and then so you got back into just like regular character. You're putting it behind you. And we all thought it was over. And you're like, does anybody have any food? Because I'm gonna stop. And then it, like it just came out of nowhere <laughs> one more time. And it was that one that that was just like, okay, nobody saw that coming. It was just so in the moment, so hilarious. Like I had to squeak. You literally hear me go, stop. Like yeah. I like I had to yeah, squeak out back. my voice. <laughs> you were holding yourself back, but you couldn't not do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's when I was like, oh man, these, uh, this my group is just, now from smiling yeah, about it. Th that group was just <laughs> yeah. insanely fun to be around. And, and I just like, I remember feeling the whole time I was like, man, these guys are so quick. I, I gotta get, I gotta get on the ball here. You know? I need it. I need it. But we did it again later on. You, me, and Mumbo had a little riff session making like bread puns. Yeah, the bread as well. puns. Yeah, that was good. They were really fun. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, sort that's of the stuff. kind of thing we're talking about. Like, like you would think watching this stuff that, that like we had some sort of script or rehearsal session where we're coming up with these puns ahead of time. But mm -mm. Uh, no, they're just all happening off the cuff. And it's just, you know, part of being a, a talented creator like yourself, just being able to come up with this oh. on the fly. Well, I'll tell you what, if that, we that did skill, by the way. Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. You go. You go. Uh, so I was just going to say that skill has been really handy for me as a dad because uh, like I can just come up with like stories that rhyme um, when I'm just making something up to like my little one or even it would be like when we were potty training her she would just refuse to go onto the potty and stuff like that and then I'd be like there once was a girl in her kitchen who's small <laughs> and she was like she wasn't listening to her dad and he was very tall and like I go <laughs> through it and as soon as it's part of a story and it's rhyming she's just captivating and she would do whatever I tell her to do and it's just <laughs> it's just I've managed to take it from content creation and just throw it into like parenting in IRL nice um which is quite funny <laughs> that is cool I like that a lot that's so when 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 we do the life series stuff, I I am I would all my money bet that if we did say, you know what, forget it, this season, let's script it, it would be terrible. Yeah, it would be terrible. Yeah, it wouldn't. We, we would be handcuffing sound. ourselves. Yeah, you know what I mean. Instead, we say, let's okay, everybody hit and record. Okay, have fun, and then let's see what happens. Yeah. And this just the magic just surface. It just reveals itself, and the the storyline yeah. reveal itself. I we we had, we talked about this with Scar in regards to I I don't know if like you've seen the movie the old movie Karate Kid. But there's a scene where, you know, Miyagi is teaching uh, Daniel Sun on how to make a, you know, trim a bonsai tree and that the design, it, it's in that tree. You have to find it. That's how I envision these life series. I, I, every single yeah. season, I'm like, I have no idea who I'm going to be, who I'm going to partner with, what I'm going to do. I don't have a clue. Hit and record. Let's start trimming those leaves and just see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and you think, and in fact, you and I in this last one, we hooked up 
instantly, and, and then we went our separate ways, but it was like, we were instantly, you, me, and Etho were together just cracking each other up, just making jokes like right away. And then it split up, but that could have actually led into something, you know, we just, you just go with yeah. what ends up happening. That's why some of my episodes end up being really long. And it's sometimes I think to myself, like, you know, the, you know, the sort of the YouTube analytical brain is like, oh, this bit's probably not good for retention and blah, 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 yes. blah, blah. But sometimes there are some conversations that I leave in that appear to be mundane or they appear to be inconsequential at that moment. But later on, something will happen and it's like, oh my God. So that happened because of this and that and that and that. Yeah. So there are times, and I think it's where my quality over quantity and not worry, I'm, I'm worrying more about the artistry of it than I am the business side of it. And that's kind of how I've been functioning for a while. And it's making sure that those narrative threads and those, those payoffs happen. Um, and I find people really enjoy that. And it kind of opens up the vision of the server more of just how on top of one another we are, but without ever truly realizing it. I mean, even moments like, you know, we couldn't script the way that Green killed Ren with Dripstone because... <laughs> Ren didn't just casually walk into there. He actually bumped his head before going through that doorway. And it was that mistake which staggered the wow. moment so that they went bam and then down. Like in Green got to show it in replay mod, I think, in his episode. It's it was that minuscule mistake meant that the timing was just right for that kill to occur. And it's just <laughs> you, you can't, you can't taken, script it, that. If it was scripted, it would have taken at least 10 takes yeah. to get that right. Exactly. Yeah, you know I mean S resetting lives it, and uh, it, doing whatever else admin you'd have to do. You how know. you tried to you tried to smoke impulse with a with a dripstone and you got scar on accident in this last one uh, and that's when you were like wrong target wrong target yeah. i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but <laughs> but the way that worked out was the timing of the, the timing dialogue is, is that he was asking you for the enchanting table or whatever and, and impulse goes what's in it for me and just as he says that scar's dead right in front of his eyes yeah. um, explodes, just explodes. Yeah. and your response you're all what <laughs> <laughs> so good and i just remember yeah. watching that whole thing and martin being like wrong target wrong target i'm so sorry yeah i think that's the other thing that that we talk about too is is none of us are like trained actors you know like you said no, you know, radio no. of course but like in, you're not a mm. trained actor right like i i definitely i didn't even like do theater in school or anything like that so no, if same. you gave me a script it would be so obvious you know like i, I would be so obviously bad mm. at it so I have yeah, to, I have no, to be ditto. more improv stuff where, you know, yeah. and that's the reason why I like the live series is because that's a aspect of content creation that I've, I've never experienced until this came along, you know, like, yeah, we, we create these videos and S and P's and stuff, but like none of it was truly like improv in the way that we're doing it to the, the yes. And, you know, you see somebody do something and you react and you try to add to it. Yep. And, um, that's yeah. what's, that's why. I was super excited when Green approached us on the experiment of Third Life because I was like, mm -hmm. this is going to be something different that like nobody's seen before. And, and yeah, it may, it may bomb, but obviously we can see now after four seasons that uh, it, it did quite well. You know, like we all super yeah. enjoyed it. It seemed like it, it got a lot of, um, you know, support from the viewers as well. And they're itching for season five already, you know. Yeah, always. So, oh, yeah. It was in the comments, not even of the finale of Limited Life. I was getting comments in like the other one being like, okay, so when's the next one? Mm -hmm. It's like, this one hasn't even ended yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like it just, they're just absolutely chomping at the bit for it. But you were saying about the kind of the yes and, and that is one of my absolute favorite things about the server is that as much as we are all the main character in our story and our perspective, my favorite thing about the cast that we ha we've had for the live series is that everyone is immediately willing to, to just jump into your moment. If you come over and you've very clearly got an engagement that you're trying to have, whether it's a bartering deal or you're trying to spread gossip or whatever it may be, nobody goes, oh, let me just finish this and I'll talk to you in a second. Mm -hmm. They just go, boom, what do you need? And they just, they they channel into that moment and immediately become whatever you need them to become. And they also honor the role play as well. So like, I know that with us, we would do with Ren, like we do like <laughs> the, the lords and ladies talk and like, yes, my liege and stuff like that. Um, but it's like, you know, people transform, uh, sorry, people commit to the role play with like, you know, recognizing the divide between the desert duo and dog walks yes. and stuff. And <clears throat> people, people sort of very naturally chose a side because they were aware that that was going to be the butting of heads at the end of the season. But it didn't have to be this whole initiation and convincing thing. They just kind of naturally, you know, blended into either side and it became this whole thing. So I think we're all really good at gauging the temperature and what the dynamics are in the groups and stuff is yeah. is quite nice and nobody's trying to <clears throat> nobody's trying to force a square peg in a round hole right mm -hmm. nobody 
Like there's, nah. there's been plenty of times where like I have a, a vision of something I'd like to see come to fruition. And as I travel down that path, my brain's like, no, it's, it's not organic. It's not working. Abort, abort. You know what I mean? Because otherwise you just, if you get stubborn, then you start to, then it just becomes <clears throat> just off kilter and unbalanced mm-hmm. and, and you can't do that. you got to just go it. And we've talked about it before where sometimes you kind of out of an idea of what you want to do in that day's episode and you're two minutes in and well, that's derailed. We just yeah. got attacked and now the whole <laughs> yeah. story, you know, and it's just, it's fun. Yeah. You gotta go with it. You know, <laughs> I had that in uh, last life. So I tried to start the the shadow clan and literally all that was, was it was, it was tentatively tied to like the wider sort of storytelling that I was doing, but like all of that happens in post-production, but in world, all I was trying to do with the shadow clan was basically have a mole in every camp. And then we'd have this cool little hoorah where we'd all turn on our individual camps and we would come out as the victors of it. But the the cover got blown on that, I think by Cleo, like very early in. And it was like, cool, well, that would have been a cool idea, but it's been caught out, such as the nature of it and carried on. I didn't try to like reform it or do a 2.0 <clears throat> or anything. I was like, no, like we've played that through. We got caught out. What's the next thing? Mm-hmm. Like, just push on. Uh, yeah. So I don't, let's see. I don't want to turn this into a life podcast, but I kind <laughs> of I yeah. do because I, I could talk about the live series for just months. I just love so much about yeah. it. And going into this last one. So you, we had a, uh, an episode that the, it was going to release on your actual in real life birthday. So you had yourself yeah. a birthday party and you were like, you know, I'm gonna have a party. It's over in this area. And my brain's like, all right, well, Skiz, I mean, you're not stupid. This is Martin. It's obviously a trap, but I'm, go- you know what? I'm going, I'm going to go to the party because I might be wrong. It might be mm-hmm. a nice little birthday. And we went there and then it got completely messed up for you. Not only was your birthday trash, but your plan was trashed. And I remember feeling uh-huh. bad and you actually broke my heart. You said, who did this at my birthday party? And I was just like, oh, <laughs> it's like, and, and, I was gaslighting hard. <laughs> yes, yeah. you did for a while there. There was a there was only one person at the party and it was Martin for like the longest time. <laughs> and it was so depressing. And then- Literally that recording session was cause we split it up into like two, one hours, maybe two 90 minute segments. I spent the majority of the first half of the recording session by myself at that, at that location. <laughs> It was such a write-off. It was oh, I literally man. wasted half my week. It's funny because like 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 you said, like a lot of the viewers that that don't like view what we do as contentness and, and they're like actually thinking we're there to like win, right? The series or whatever. Yeah, they they yeah. would <clears throat> criticize us in the comments and stuff and be like, Why would you go to that birthday party when you know it's gonna result in your death? You know? Yeah. And it's like of, of course we're gonna go because it's content. We're trying to make content together and yeah. trying to make, you know, it the best we can. And if I put myself at risk, then that's more drama. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. there's zero desire to win, but where a lot of people think our desire should be around like ninety eight to hundred percent, I would venture that we all hover around five to ten percent desire to win, and the rest mm-hmm. is dedicated yeah. towards making good content, maintaining these friendships because you know, you, you talked about it, Martin, that whenever somebody needs something while we're recording, we're there. You need me to be this character. You need me yeah. to do this thing. You didn't say you did, but I see what you're doing here. I, I I picked up on on the story you're creating. I'm in, right? We do that. Or or I know the story Constantly. you're trying to do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna double down on this and ruin your story and divert it and all that stuff, right? So that part's fun. But there's another dynamic here we're not talking about, and it's the fact that that translates into real life. And what I mean by that is Whenever somebody's having some sort of technical issue in, you know, maybe in Discord, guys, I'm having this issue with my audio or whatever. Dude, somebody mentioned something about audio and you provided a step by step tutorial on exactly <laughs> how to add uh, the multi, uh, the multi, not the multi compressor and then how to broadcast and exactly what settings you use. It wasn't a, oh, oh there's, yeah. yeah. You did a, I've gone back to that several times for this podcast. You know what I mean? Like quite literally, because when we first started doing this, well, we were on our, our audio was blended into a single track and I didn't really know how to properly balance it. I'm still working with that or whatever. Martin's tutorial is something I've used several times and he's not the only one to do it. A lot of people have provided these play by plays. It provides them absolutely no benefit other than the fact that they're helping out one of their one of their family members of the life series. So what you see oh, yeah, happen yeah. on screen, it translates into the real world. You know what I mean? Yeah, big time. Yeah, I, I, I've I, always kind of been a thing. And if we're all thriving, then like that's always a good thing for me. Like I, I like to think that I'm very selfless in that regard. And it's the same as I was talking about in MCC earlier on. I try and make sure that new players are having a great time. The vibes are good. We're not getting hung up on numbers. It's 
as soon as someone's got a problem, I, I try and help if I can. I've got a relatively broad skill set. It's not I'm I'm kind of like a, a jack of all trades, certainly master of none, but I've I've dipped my toe in a lot of pools, even just for like a level of understanding for like, you know, say if I want someone to make me a Minecraft 3D render or an item in the game, I've gone and learned how to make things in the Bedrock Edition or even in Java Edition, bringing in items and hats and the like, so that if I ever commission somebody to make something, I want to have a degree of understanding of what I'm asking from them. Because, I've, you know, you hear it all the time from people who are like web designers or illustrators, and like they have people come to them and go, oh, just make it like a bit more orangey. It's like, well, what does that really mean? Which part of it you're talking about? So <laughs> for me, it's kind of that thing of trying to ensure that everyone around me is thriving, but also like trying to ensure that that communication is clear and that those end goals are kind of achievable um for yeah. everyone there was something early on that i i could just tell that like martin knew what he was doing uh, especially when it came to audio because <clears throat> martin suggested uh picking up that tube mpc and it's it's a uh, it's a device basically yeah. just to send your audio through and it kind of like uh softens it up or, or gives it i don't know warms so a uh, warmness to it yeah and yeah. also adds like compressors and other stuff as well and, and i remember like you mentioned it and I didn't hesitate. I was like, if Martin's recommending this, I totally trust that it's it's <laughs> worth having. And I bought it like that day. And then I was like DMing you like, what are your settings? Because I have no idea what this thing actually does, you know? And like, yeah. And so he, he took up like a picture of his settings on on his tube MTC and, and sent it to me. And I was just like, I'm just going to mimic that. And the next thing you know, I'm I like. I think Green's actually just nabbed one just the other day as well. Yeah. So I, I literally had those old pictures just to like sort yeah, of Yeah, to send them to him too, yeah yeah but like yeah. I, there was just something about it like the second you mentioned like hey this device is actually really good you should think about getting it mm. i was like you know i'm not gonna i'm not even gonna question or research i just bought it and i was like okay i bought it <laughs> and it's still in my it's still in my audio chain today like every, it's such a good yeah. bit of kit it just makes your like your louds a bit quieter and they will never make that staticky sound and then it makes your quiets a bit louder so it kind of gives you a slightly more middle ground but it means you can then crank that up and then you're just always audible like i can play games on the stream because i think in the live capacity that's where it works best is because if you're playing a game on stream you often have your microphone turned down so if you shout you're not going to make it all staticky and horrible mm -hmm. but this kind of gives you a really nice beefy bit that you can bump up so it means when i'm playing games that i've got intense soundtrack in or whatever else it may be i'm still very audible and very clear above it all which is quite nice um yeah it's a really really nice bit of kit i, I love it <laughs> yeah just remember like I didn't like that was the thing. It was like I, I knew for whatever reason there was like a confidence in in your in the way that you spoke about things. And I was just like, uh, he knows what he's talking about yeah. when it comes to audio. Obviously, more <laughs> than me. I like he just mentioned a thing that I didn't even know was existed. And I'm like, okay, I'm <laughs> I gonna gotta try get it. one. I gotta get one. Yeah, I've been trying to talk Skizen to get in one <laughs> for a while. Really good. He, he, whatever your current, as long as it's an XLR microphone, like yep. it's just like a, a middle ground. It's microphone to the tube MPC, MPC to whatever your yeah. PC input thing is. Um, just makes I'm it a little bit it. more beefy. So uh, talk, you, you mentioned streaming there for a second. I want to kind of get back to that world for just a brief moment and, and full, full mm. disclosure. So, I, so all the, all the questions that, you know, uh, our, our glimpse folks had, had compiled together. I, I like to put them in, like mess with formatting and make it a little bit more readable before I send them to you. So you can have a peek at them. And yeah, one yeah. of them, I was, I was reading through the questions and I just, I'm a very honest person. I'm like, they asked what, you know, tell us about your experience as a VTuber. I'm like, oh, they meant, they meant YTuber, YouTuber. And I was about to send them like, hold on, Skiz, you're an idiot. So you have to look into this. So I was like, let me, and so I, I, I Google it. I'm like, oh, virtual to, okay. Yeah. I'm really glad I didn't fix this. And then I started going through, I'm like, but I've seen them stream before. I know what, what virtual, you know, virtual tubers or virtual stream or whatever, I, I've never seen him do that, but I just started going through your old streams. I'm like, oh, there's, oh, he does do this. So about how yeah, long, tell yeah. us about, this is a question from Lux. How long ago did you start kind of looking into the, you know, the, the virtual streaming thing? So I think it was just a little over a year ago. So it would have been May of 2022 when I first <clears throat> debuted my VTuber. Um, and I, I, be, I was aware of it for at least a year or two before that. For anybody that's unfamiliar with what it is, basically you have a 3D avatar, yes, like you. a video game character. And I literally have uh, like an old iPhone on my desk and it uses the face tracking that you use for like face ID and stuff. And it tracks every micro movement of your eyebrows, your nose, your mouth, stuff like that. And you can rig it up to this character so that you can have a visual presence on a live stream or whatever else it may be. Uh, but without actually having to turn your camera on. And that is genuinely the reason that I got an avatar commissioned is because um, this was, I want to say, how long into it would it have been? I think we're about 
a year and a bit into having a kid and we had another one on the way and we're in the process of finally moving out of the in-laws moving into this house and i was like I am just so run down and I look really tired on stream all the time. I, I have bad resting bitch face when I play games and stuff. Anyway, if I'm concentrating, I'm like this. So I just, I don't look entertained, but this avatar, it's default state is happy and smiley. Like it looks really, you know, sort of engaged. Um, and it was a way of still being present, but without having to be present. Um, and kind of the, the extra layer to doing the VTuber stuff is that I always saw it as a really fun, creative outlet. Um, because I only just started writing kind of like stories and lore and messing around with some like character design stuff um, a couple years ago. And I just saw that everybody that was doing VTubing was having a blast writing these origin stories, releasing songs and doing comic books and stuff. And I was like, those are all things I would love to do. I just need something to attach them to, like a character to attach them to. So I'm never role playing when I have the avatar. Right? It's very much, I'm just me streaming, but there is this separate little narrative going on outside and around it. Um, and yeah, I just, I just quite enjoyed it. I got to like write a story. I had an illustrator who did a cool little sort of like, not even stop motion. It was more just sort of like a, a slowly animated storybook for when I debuted the character and stuff. And the, the kind of the major thing was as well, was that my channel was in this really weird, muddy phase at that point where I wasn't sure what I was doing. Um, and I was like, I just kind of want to meet more like-minded people. People who typically watch VTubers a lot are into anime, Japanese culture, manga, and video games. And I'm into all those four things as well. So if I present myself in that way, <clears throat> hopefully I will start to draw in more people with common interests. And that just kind of fleshes out that passive conversation that you have with people when you're streaming. They're like, oh, have you seen this new trailer? Have you read this comic? It's it's that passive conversation that I wanted to have more in common with the viewer um, and I saw that as a way of kind of like pooling those people, if you would. And it, it, I think it worked. I think it worked pretty well. And then once we kind of got out the other end of the house move and I felt a bit more refreshed and a little bit more camera ready, that's where I kind of pulled back on it. And I sort of bring it out every so often as a as a nice little um, hiding mechanism. Yeah, yeah. And then it's another layer too. It, it, it's like those, I've seen mm. other people do those avatars, avatars and they... They kind of bring their own their own their own charm. They mm -hmm. really do. It's a, they they yeah, offer something different. Really. Yeah. Gosh, I like that. That's a that's a good reason to do one though. It's like yeah, like I don't want to always <clears throat> have to look like I'm I'm here. You know, like a hundred percent. Yeah. Like sometimes you kind of force it. You know, in a way. Like yeah, we all have our days, right? Where you wake up and it's it's just like oh, I don't yeah. have. I don't have the energy or, or maybe it's just a bad hair day. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be, yeah. you know, anything, but you, you have the ability now to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm just going to put the avatar on instead. Uh, the other yeah, option is I just find no, that most no camera at all, but you lack personality then, right? Yeah. It, it, that's the thing. I've even done it with like, I've got just a little pixel art avatar and it is just a flat 2d image. And when I speak, <clears throat> uh, the mouth just flaps and that's it. And I think it blinks occasionally, <laughs> yeah. but just having that thing to look at when somebody's speaking, it's almost like making eye contact in a conversation. It just gives the audience a little something to kind of connect to, I guess. Um, and it, yeah, it's quite good. And also as well, like I find that whether it's through my radio experience or if it's just me in general, I think a lot of us share the same trait where, we can be quite stern looking when we play games and stuff, but we're always so animated with our voices. It's always like, oh, hey, thanks for dropping in and answering questions and talking. And it's the vocal tone often doesn't match the facial <laughs> tone. Um, so it's nice kind of drawing the drawing them together to be more kind of one and the same, I guess. Yeah, yeah you kind of mentioned uh, just like going through kind of these ebbs and flows of being a creator is, is, is making decisions like that. Like when when to make these big changes um yeah you you made one on your youtube channel and and that you kind of like split your content right like you your your channel yeah. your main channel the mm. one that the one that you guys over a million how many subs do you have on the main channel these days i, I didn't i think it's i think it's like 2.5 or 2.6 wow something like that so that channel got big you know in the beginning with yogs cast right mm -hmm. and then um so just tell us the story like because at some point you decided to actually like start a second channel and move your minecraft content over to that second channel what happened there what what helped make that decision or, or what led you to that decision i think it was i i think my stubbornness finally gave out and i just played the game a little bit on youtube so it's when i started that channel way back when and doing all the yogscast stuff i was solely minecraft nothing but minecraft but then of course i got burned out because minecraft back in those days they're like they barely added the nether there wasn't really a huge wealth of stuff to do in minecraft 
And I just felt really kind of pigeonholed. And if I even tried to play another game, the comments were just so volatile. And I was just mm. a bit like, this is a bit exhausting. And I ended up doing a really dumb decision back then. And I was like, right, you know what? No more Minecraft. And I just stopped Minecraft entirely, which is such a weird thing to decide to do. But I think it was taking such a toll on my mental health that I was just stuck in this hole, not feeling particularly inspired, but knowing that this is now my job. I've got rent to pay and you know my mouth to feed and stuff like that um so i just started playing games that i wanted to play just for the sake of it so i played you know marios and zeldas and um there's a game that i love called nino kuni which is um uh, a jrpg which is some stuff in it's done by studio ghibli who have made you know spirited away and things like that um and for a while quite a long period being variety actually worked well because back in those days quantity did trump quality on youtube you could play just about anything you wouldn't get like you know suppressed on recommended feeds and all this analytical stuff for playing something different every day of the week but nowadays that's just not the case anymore like i stuck with variety to the point where my channel was basically in the red and i was actually having to get forward payments from the Ogscast each month just to kind of like make rent and stuff and i was like they can float me for maybe two more months but then i have to be realistic and just say you know what i've got to quit um and just kind of go back to radio or do something else and then all of a sudden one summer uh fortnite was one of the games that was in my rotation of about three or four games fortnite just exploded for me i had a summer where they were doing these uh little easter egg hunts every day for a challenge uh, they were called fort bites so like a little microchip you would find in game and you get a really vague clue as to what it was and they did that every single day for a summer. And every video I put out that summer, I think, got like a million views each day. It was absolutely wow. wild. This was during like Fortnite's peak. And I was just the go-to guy. <clears throat> and back then, people were starting to play the game of YouTube and being like, right, well, I'm not going to get any ads on a video that's too short. So even though this is only 40 seconds of information to relay, I need to put it in like a six-minute video and hide it in the middle just to hit that ad rate so they can get pre-rolls on it. And I was like, again, my stubbornness was kind of still present. I was like, no, if it's 40 seconds, I'm going to say hello, do the 40 seconds of info and get back out of there. And I think that sincerity and that honesty just meant that those views went crazy because people would look it up. They'd see the videos like one minute, 12 seconds, and they would come straight through. But ironically, those videos won like maybe after a week or two, they were getting incredible views already. But suddenly the monetization just switched on. And I don't know if it was somebody at YouTube who did it, but they were monetizing like six to 10 minute long uh, videos, but for 90 seconds of content. And it was bizarre. Wow. <laughs> and, that, and that completely took control of that channel. And then when I tried uploading other stuff around that, that wasn't Fortnite, I noticed that those videos were just tanking like more so than before I stopped being variety. Um, so I just decided to kind of just respect the flow and just kind of go with it. So then when I kind of returned to Minecraft in a video format for the live series and um, for a really old Zelda adventure craft mod that I used to love that got a revival. Um, I was like, okay, let's let's commit to the the one channel, one topic situation. Um, and yeah, that's when I started putting Minecraft on what is, in a, in a lot of ways, my second channel now. Um, and it seems like both of them are, are thriving in their own ecosystems, which is good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we kind of had to make the same decision because... Uh, we mm -hmm. had a YouTube channel that was Imp and Skiz, and it was mainly Minecraft focused. That's all we we had done on it, just all of our Minecraft adventures together. And when we started doing this podcast, we, we were like, okay, well, let's just, you know, we have this established channel. It had over 100,000 subscribers, which was awesome. And we we're like, let's throw the podcast on that channel because that's where all, all of our subscribers are. And, yeah. and what we noticed was, you know, YouTube doing its its thing. And it was like, oh, well, you're putting videos on this channel with 100,000 subscribers that only a handful are, are watching and so it was suppressing right and so we're like yeah. oh, okay so this isn't good because like the, the we realized the people that subbed that channel were there because they wanted to watch us play minecraft not particularly our podcast although some were more interested and in, in wanted to see what we did outside of minecraft as well but we yeah. made that decision to just create another another channel impenska's yeah. podcast channel on youtube and that's where this lands and um it, it's just more fitting now it's topic based so yeah, it really is. You, YouTube's a really harsh platform and space to be in. I mean, content creation in general is like it is. There is there is a degree of where like, you know, skill and talent can shine through, but it's so much about luck. And that's why 
I think I got so stubborn in those later years. And nowadays I'm very much like I'm riding this thing now, but I won't fight tooth and nail to stay a content creator whenever my next dip occurs. I'm just going to go with it and ride it out because it's so upsetting, honestly, and kind of mentally draining to try and please the algorithm and do all the right things, but then not be rewarded for yeah. it. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I just, I can't put myself through it's that. It's vicious. And it's something that I, I'm struggling with myself. So for example, it's like we do the live series and my channel goes, it just goes up and up and up and up. And then the live yeah. series is over and I don't want to just stop creating. But now I find myself in a space where the, the, the experiment has been done in regards to, I know exactly what's going to happen. So now I know, not think, I know every time I release a video, it's, I'm going to lose subs. And we, we, yeah. we put so much gravity in, in gaining subs, which rightly so, but it's like, because the life series is such a, an influential um, piece of, of my channel and specifically because you're also huge and I'm so small. Uh, when I go to put out a video, I have to be at peace with the fact that every video I put out there, no matter how hard I work on it, if it's not a life series video, I'm going to lose subs. And it's, it's like this mm -hmm. thing. I've just had to swallow that pill at first. I thought, okay, well that'll taper off. But it was, and on top, here was a weird thing. I release a video, I would have 99.9 .9 to 100% likability on it, but lose hundreds of subs every time. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like, it was like what, what am I supposed to do with this world? And you just, yeah. it got to a point to where it's like, as soon as I started, and, I, and I'm not the best at this, but I realized as soon as I just say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to create because I like to create. It gives me this yeah. nice temporary, and, and I'm able to get through it, but then I'm still human. And after several weeks of creating and, oh, good, I lost only you know 600 subs this week or whatever by creating all these videos, it's still like I'm human. It gets to you. It's like, mm -hmm. what, why am I even doing this? You know, yeah. it's hard, man. My sort of like validation from things now just comes from like subs I don't care about. Uh, the like ratio is always pretty decent anyway, but it's about the actual engagement in the comments. Like, did people enjoy that edit that I did? Did they, did they think that joke landed? Like, has it inspired fan art? Like, because I really love delving around on Tumblr. Like, I really enjoy that community and kind of conversing with them because I think they they are picking up what I'm putting down and that's where it kind of really ticks the box for me, which is quite nice. Yeah, the validating... But yeah, between... Go ahead, I'm sorry. So I was just saying, just between the live series, I didn't do anything. And after Limited Life ended, haven't done a thing until uh this new life series but again it's that same thing isn't it it's a lot of other massive creators and i'm coming in as kind of like a bit of a a youtube relic yeah, yeah. Uh, and sort of like lowering down the card but i knew that would pop so i knew that this was a safe bet to upload and so far it has been so i'm under no delusions that i'm a number puller alone but i'm putting in a good show and making stuff that works from my perspective yes. but also giving other people moments yes. as well Yes, um, so I'm that. very realistic about it. It's a validating moment, you know. And I mean, we t I, mm. I talked about it for like two seconds in, the, in our part one with you is that the the bread bridge destruction thing that was like this whole thing I had this vision for and I wanted to do it. And then I m when I did the editing for that particular scene, I remember being like, I want uh, this is what I want people talking about in the comments. I want people to feel yeah. this moment. I want them to feel the tension and release on how the music plays with it. I want them to be a part of, I want them to enjoy the destruction and the risk. And, and I want them to have all that. We even had, I was so grateful that Grian shot Tango off the bridge and almost killed him because we had, um, well, he didn't, he happened to land in water, but we almost had, we had lost, right? We like during the chaos, yeah. there goes Tango falling off the screen, like everything worked. And I released a video in the comments. It was like, I, I, I asked and you guys answered the comments blew up with that scene. We love this scene. I love the editing. I love the music. Yeah. And that's in those moments. I'm like, that's where I feel the, my healthiest. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to care about subs. I'm going to care about the fact that I created something. I created art and they love it. And it I resonated. It. Yes. Yeah. It feels good, man. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about Martin as a child. I want to, and the reason I'm asking this is because, He's kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, well, because you do, you fascinate me and, and i and it just seems like you're one of those people that's sort of kind of a quiet assassin. Like you're just kind of, you're kind of good at whatever's in front of you. And that's, that's interesting to me. Right. But I think about who is <laughs> my wife hates it. She says that all the time. She goes, I just, I hate you can just do it all. Yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> right? like, yeah, I picked up on that and that's, and that's good. And that's a, that's a great way to be. And it feels like from a gaming standpoint, you're that person, but go back to Martin between like the ages of like five to 15. Who, who were you back then? You know what? It's such a far departure from who I am now, honestly, looking back on it. Like that whole thing I was saying before about like self-validation, uh, sorry, getting uh, validation from even people who didn't like me and stuff. Like that level of insecurity was so aggressive up until I genuinely want to say probably my mid-20s. Um, so that whole time I was an extroverted character, 
But I think looking back on it, it just, I think it was always just quite false and just quite like put on. I think I was just desperate to get a laugh out of the room or to kind of show that I belonged or whatever else it may be, which sounds really sad. And it is a little bit, but I never had bad times, but I know that I wasn't being my authentic self that whole time. I think I certainly uh, hid my nerdiness and stuff like that and tried to blend in too much with people that I wasn't particularly the same as growing up. Um, but again, I sort of used to lean into comedy to kind of relieve those things. Like I'd make jokes about myself, but then make, you know, other jokes around it. Or, you know, I would try and be, I think, I think that's where my, a, a degree of my kind of helpful nature comes to is that I think growing up, I didn't feel like I had anything to contribute to a conversation or to people. So I tried to be helpful. I tried to learn skills that would be applicable in a lot of places, whether that was, knowing how to use a computer so I could help somebody out if they were stuck or whatever else it may be. I think I was really kind of searching for my purpose or finding my my space for my very oddly shaped jigsaw piece that I was mm. <laughs> uh, growing up. And I think it's all that kind of culminated in a lot of, a lot of different skill sets and a lot of kind of, you know, because I think I just had a huge lack of life experience, I guess. I think it, I was, I think I'd, at school I'd be really extroverted. I'd be around people tons, making people laugh and stuff. But then I go home in the evenings and often it, I'd just be at home by myself all night. There was a couple of kids I'd play with on the street like growing up and that was really, really fun. But as they got older and they would like go a couple streets over to play with their friends, I would never kind of go along or be brought along to that sort of thing. So it's weird. And I think that's why I kind of sank into the whole internet kind of space at around kind of like 15, 16. So prior to ever doing the radio stuff, um or at least the pr professional radio stuff i was actually doing online radio um randomly for there's an old chat room called habbo hotel and there used to be community radio stations based around habbo hotel so i'd be doing a radio show and i'd be like right let's all go to this room and we'll meet up and there'd be a physicality to people meeting up in those spaces so i was kind of i guess i kind of found my tribe there initially and i found people who were slightly more kind of like solitary creatures but you know, had a love for music or just games and stuff. And it's kind of, yeah, I think kind of coming out the other end of 15, 16 is where I kind of found my tribe. And then it's kind of snowballed to where I am now kind of thing. But yeah, a lot of like self-love needed to be learned in those kind of early to mid twenties periods. Um, I like that. Yeah. Good, that's great. Wow. That was honest. I, that was hot. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I, just, I, I operate on honesty so much nowadays. Like it's, even even if I think it's going to cause some kind of discourse, I will just speak honestly. Not discourse as in like going out to upset people, but for example, like if I've had run-ins or if I've had gripes with, say, sponsors or collaborators, I'll be honest with them. I won't berate them about things, but I'll say, from my perspective, this exchange we've just had didn't work for me for X, Y, Z reason. Um, and I'll just say, I operate on honesty. I would love if you're honest back with me. And I found, surprising, to my surprise, and I'm really thankful for it, is that they respect that honesty. It's not the typical corporate, you know, back and forth and being overly polite. I just, I'm just straight shooter with people and it, it seems to have worked out for me. Um, but I think I've had to get over that herd a little bit. Like, I think now I'm fully in it. I'll give everyone, anyone my honest opinion. But I know that there was a moment years ago, I was at a convention. I did a stage piece with a bunch of other content creators. I think it was like three or four of them. Um, and they were significantly larger than me in terms of sub count and stuff. Um, but we went on stage together, not really even knowing each other on a personal level all that much. They were just sort of pushed on there by the event organizers. And we just clicked on stage. We really clicked. There was jokes. There was banter. We were running into the crowd, coming back. It was just like, we just put on such a great show and it was all improv. And like, I remember afterwards we went backstage and they were commenting on how just kind of natural it felt and how we all really gelled because they'd worked together a lot. And I was kind of the fourth, you know, the fourth wheel on that sort of thing. Um, and I just really sort of open heartedly was just like, you know what? That really surprised me as well. I was like, if you guys ever want to do anything, like if you ever want to record something, like, you know where I am, give me a shout. And I just saw their faces drop. And they like, I don't know if they, it was in that weird period on YouTube where I think there was money at play. And I think people's priorities on YouTube shifted. Yeah. And I think I felt that show, social sting. And that that sat with me for a couple of years. And I kind of pulled back on being openly like proud of other creators or really loudspeaker in their stuff but the more i kind of reflected on that moment i was like no you know what i didn't do anything wrong in that engagement no. i was reading the room we had a really lovely authentic moment and 
um, I was just putting out a willingness to do it again. It wasn't like a, oh, give me your number or, you know, <laughs> trying to have any kind of forced exchange. I was just like, I'm here, you know where I am. Um, and they just sort of took it the wrong way, I guess. I guess they had the preconceptions. Hmm. Um, but yeah, a year or two afterwards, it clicked for me. And from that moment onwards, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say my piece, live my life. And I can go to bed content knowing that I put my best foot forwards and that I'm doing the best for those around me as well. Um, mm -hmm. You're just going to, you're just yeah. going to be you. We, we live in a world where when you engage somebody who is in the realm of what we would classify as a, as a stranger, even when we sometimes pretend to know them, uh, instantly people, their guards up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, and when you really speak, is. honestly, when you speak truthfully, you're saying, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not trying to bamboozle you. So that, that what the world's doing yeah. right now, like I'll acknowledge that it's a reality, but right now it's not, this mm -hmm. is just who I am. You're in or you're out, you know? And, and yeah. it's, it's, it's scary for some people because unfortunately so many people have been so, so very slighted. So many people have been so wronged mm -hmm. and, and, and come to the other yeah. side feeling really stupid and suckered that they just they, they, that guard is just yeah. up it just stays up you know it's a, it's that's, a shame. that's why i try if i ever try to do something that's just like generous or whatever else it may be i try and almost make it happen before even kind of like saying it like you know what i mean that's in like so they don't feel as though they have to have an ongoing conversation afterwards like even if it's like some people at the store the other day like they were in front of me in the queue their card was getting declined and i was like i got this dude bam that's it and i walked off before they could even like dwell on it too much. I didn't want them to be like, oh, like, you know, you don't have to do that or like this, that and the other. I didn't want them to feel as though they had to justify it or explain it. I was just like, no, I just want to help out someone who needs a quick hand. It's all it takes and away we go. Like I can just disappear into the mist and <laughs> they, they can carry on. I didn't want them to feel as though that I was trying to like swindle them like, oh, I'll pay for it now. But then when we get outside, I'm going to start asking X, Y, Z. I just sort of beep and then just vanished. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. sort of like ran away. Yeah. So I was going to uh, ask one of the questions from our viewers. Uh, you might have just brought up that moment, though. But their question was, what's the most defining memory for for your, per, for you personally, something you remember that changed your brain chemistry? And after you told yeah. that story of, of the panel that, that you just told, that I'm wondering if that was it, if you just answered that. that was yeah, I think it kind of was. And I think the, the only other click that I've ever had was out the end of a previous relationship I like had a convention coming up in LA and I was like, you know what? Like I've always been really scared of traveling alone and, you know, such a dependency on other people or their opinions. And I just, I went to LA by myself for a week and I knew a few content creators that lived there, not super well or anything, but I collaborated with them before. And I just kind of tried to live on that. You don't know unless you ask. And I literally was like, Hey, I'm in LA for a couple of days before it might have even been like a mine con or something like that. And I just shot them a message. It was like, if you want to hang out, let me know and we'll do it. And it's, I think I hung out with people like Shelby and I hung out with a, a guy called Parker. Um, and yeah, and it was just, it was just really nice. And I think that helped me realize like, oh, actually like I can ask. And even if they say no, that's the worst of it. I literally had someone tweet me, um, I think barely two, three days ago now. And they're a smaller creator. Um, I think they've only got sort of like a couple hundred followers on Twitter and they were like, Hey Martin, like this is a long shot, but I'm doing this build challenge and I was wondering if you're up for taking part on it. And he was like, I'm just trying to show people that the worst you can receive is a no and I'll, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll get over it if not. And I replied to him because as much as it was a no, I replied saying like, I really love that initiative you're showing mm -hmm. and that message you're pushing out there. And I was like, I genuinely can't right now. I, if I could, I genuinely would have because I just love that kind of vibe they were giving off. Uh, but I was like, I have got so much going on IRL. I've got so much going on with work. I was like all the best with it. And like, if they message me in the future and I do have time, I'm sure I'm going to spare time to that. Cause I just, I just kind of love that, you know, approach, I guess, to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got to, got to, you got to take your shots, right? Like, mm, you don't, absolutely. You, don't, you know, what, what do they say? You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Right. Yeah. So, big time. Yeah. So you mentioned like going to conventions and, and meeting other creators and it kind of got me thinking mm. like, so we met you through the life series, but in order for you yeah. to be in the life series, meant that you probably knew Grian because he was the one orchestrating the life series. How did that come yeah. about? How did you and Grian form a relationship? So I, th I think it was partly or mostly through my wife. I had met Grian before I think he'd ever even uploaded on YouTube. So Grian uh, was involved with a server called Wingcraft, which was like a, almost like a World of Warcraft-esque, like an MMORPG in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And this was like in the early days of Minecraft. So it really was, and still to this day is quite a standout 
um, server. And I think at that time, Green was one of the kind of writers and builders for that server. And I think through him and also some of the members of the Nox crew, we were all a bit of a huddle. At, I want to say it was Minecon Paris or maybe the odd other occasion at like, uh, there's an event called Insomnia in the UK. Um, and I think we'd all met in that capacity, you know, and just sort of hung out. And I think the group that I was with and and people like that, we didn't care if someone was a creator or not. There was this weird period socially within YouTube, particularly in the Minecraft gaming area. Like, I guess it was really during the mini game era is the, the sort of the window that I always kind of pin it as. But there was a lot of people just trying to like shoulder rub and get to know people for like, just for the case of like climbing up the ladder. But our little kind of group and community that we had at these events, it was just pure, like, just pure niceness. We were just there. We we're all at the same event. Let's go out for dinner together. Let's have a few drinks afterwards. It doesn't matter if you're an editor, just someone's friend, or if you're a content creator. We didn't care who you were. We wanted to get to know you as a person. Um, and I remember Grian um, basically saying that he remembers us from that period, or me and uh, my wife and people like that. Um, and that's why when he did become a content creator he sort of gravitated back towards us because he would go to events in Ireland with my wife and uh, and Timmy and people like that. Um, and that's kind of how that relationship formed. And I kind of came in by osmosis through my wife and got to know, you know, Green in, in another way, kind of beyond that. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of, just have known Green kind of casually in our friend group for, for years and years. And even though I hadn't done much YouTube content with Minecraft, I'd been streaming it and I was involved with, um, you know, some other like stream only SMPs and stuff. And then he just sort of pitched this to us one day and I was like, yeah, I'll give it a go. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've, uh, you've actually been in quite a few things, right? Uh, like if we, yeah. we go back in, in history and, and look at how many like SMPs you've been part of or how many different like Minecraft series <laughs> you've done. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing it's more than you can count on two hands. You know, what's crazy though, is I, I just can't remember so many of them. I, cause that all of those series would have been back in my quantity over quality period. So there were times back then for multiple year streaks where I was uploading like three videos a day. Jeez. I'd record a Zelda, I'd record the Escapist, and then I'd record something in Minecraft. Like even Minecraft Evo, which was the first project Green invited me on to. Um, I just don't remember like 90% of that series. I'd log in with Timmy once a week. We were a little duo known as the Property Police, and we were basically just telling people where they could and couldn't build and <laughs> passing off all these absolutely absurd regulations about what their build could look like. <laughs> um but yeah i've been i've been in some cool series one of my favorite ones as of late was uh the latter part of uh this year just gone uh, i was in a series called rats smp um mm -hmm. and the concept of that was really fun like it was a we were living in an attic of this giant like manor house and we were all only about half a block tall um and basically the story was when you go down into the house you've got to try and keep out of the way it was basically the borrowers but a minecraft smp and there were NPCs, there were cats that would chase you. And if you got caught, you get put in a cage. <laughs> and everybody had these really distinct characters. Like some of those were artists. Like my character was just a, a guy that ran a bar. And I had these scars that were like nondescript. And like anytime somebody would say, how'd you get those scars? I would just improv a different story to them. <laughs> and then if they were part of a conversation next time about the scars, I'd tell the story and they'd go, didn't you tell me it was because of that? And I just gaslight them and go, no, no, I never said that. It was definitely this story <laughs> I'm telling right now. Um, but that SMP had like a gentle bit of narrative. So once a week you could log in and there was a story event and then it, it, that would happen each week up to the finale. And there was like this story about the rats finally getting ousted from the house. And it was just, it's a, it was a phenomenal SMP. And I'm hoping that um, Owen and Apo who put that together are going to do another one in the future because They've got a real eye for world building and storytelling that you can kind of voluntarily dip in and out of an ebb and flow with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite SMPs I've done so far. Yeah, I can definitely tell like like when you create content, you you lean more towards like the storytelling elements, right? Like anytime, mm. even you know, even in life series, you're telling a story, even if it wasn't in game, you're telling a story through your editing and, and bringing in the watchers and yeah. adding lore and things like that. And I think. Um, that that for me has really set you apart from a lot of the content creators that that I've worked with in the past. Was just seeing how you're able to bake in extra into just like the vanilla content that you typically get playing Minecraft. Yeah, I, you know what it is though. That is completely masking the fact that I have no building abilities in <laughs> Minecraft. Like it's like I get asked like, oh, would you ever join like this SMP or that SMP? And it's like 
I I just can't build. I just I think where I don't have a mind's eye, I find it really hard to actualize stuff. It's I have to literally place every block, step back and look at it, but I can't ever imagine or you know mind's eye. I can maybe do like a sketch in Photoshop, like a really scuffed MS Paint looking thing, um, but that's as close as I can get. So I think I definitely I'm just recognizing that that's not something that's in my skill set, but trying to really lean into the elements that you know I've got like the improv and you know, some slight storytelling. I'm not trained in any form of English. Like I could barely <laughs> <laughs> string a sentence together at the best of the time. So um, just trying to play to my strengths as best I can and make sure the well doesn't run dry at any point. That's, yeah, we are, we are brothers. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, and I are brothers. Yeah, I was going to say, Skiz is over here taking notes. Like, I'm like mm, yeah. okay, okay. I don't want to have to learn to build either. So let's... I want, I would love, like, like, I just, my building is just complete garbage. And, but, but my ability to uh, collaborate with people on a, on, a, on a whim, I'm good at that. My improv is good. I actually do have kind of a theater background. I did theater as a child. Like I, I that whole oh, that, cool. that dynamic is something that I, not only feel like I have a natural knack for, I very much enjoy and actually also have a little bit of training. I'm, I'm good in that space. And then it's like, build a nice entrance. And I'm like, well, you lost me. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't, I don't know what it is. I think that's the one thing that's like really great about like being Minecraft content creators is because Minecraft basically is just a scene, right? It's, it's not yeah, about, the, it's not about the scene that's on the stage. It's about the actors and what they're saying and doing. Yeah. And so yeah. There, a, a lot more can be put behind the storytelling and the and the being able to to be quick and, and witty and, and all that kind of stuff is almost more important than what your build is going to end up looking like if, you know but i'd sure love to be able to build the way some of you guys build i i like i yeah, i just me too. sometimes like i'll just gonna i probably this is gonna be kind of ah, should i even uh, spoiler <laughs> i'm not gonna do it but i actually am not gonna do it it's a spoiler <laughs> for something but but no i've just i, I my, i've seen some things done where i'm just like i i would have literally never even thought of that let alone been able to execute that you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's so clever and and to watch like your videos and watch mumbo's videos and greens and and all the different and scar the with scar built in the I, I don't get it i don't understand like i i can even if i can <laughs> that's the worst part dude is i actually can see it i actually can envision it but i can't do it like it's the same thing to me when like i i covet people's ability to draw and paint I want that because I'm a very visually based person and I would, I can see things in my mind in regards to what would be a great metaphorical picture or whatever. And I would love to sketch it out. I go to do it and it's, it's like somebody else has control of my hand. My brain knows yeah. what I want to write, but I do it. I'm like, and it's the worst <laughs> thing ever. And I'm just like, I, I quit. It's so <laughs> frustrating. One day we're going to get one of those chips and it will just actualize anything that like if you can see the mental image, yeah. it's just going to bang it on the canvas yeah. yes. for you. It'll be so good. Yeah. 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 But, but, yeah. but you know what? I want you to also think about how dangerous that would be. Oh, no. <laughs> the things that you'd be thinking of and just pop. <laughs> hey, no, print that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, one good thing about like we were talking about you doing multiple like SMPs and stuff like that is I'm sure that gave you an opportunity to meet a lot of other content creators, which is something that yeah. um, I've recently been been trying to do myself because, you know, I was on Hermitcraft and I was kind of just like stuck in just uh, just knowing the hermits, you know what I mean? And, and that was it. Yeah. Like I didn't really reach out to try to meet other people, um, you know, of course, with with doing the life series that gave me a chance to, to meet you, Martin, and, and a few other people you know, Joel and, and Timmy or Jimmy, we still don't know. Jimmy, I mean, yes, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but, you know. <laughs> I'm going to call, I'm going to start calling him Tommy and I'm just going to put it there. New name, new name. But it's given me a chance to, to meet some new people and then uh, getting into MCC is also like putting me on teams with people that I thought I would never get a chance to meet, you know, like Phil's yeah. and uh, Illumina and like, like, you know, anywhere from speed runners to, to, you know, super popular streamers and things like that. It's been a uh, fun experience just like getting to know other content creators in this in this realm and i don't know about you martin but one thing that i've found so far is like everybody is just so awesome like i don't understand yeah. I'm, I'm like i'm dreading the day that i meet another minecraft content creator and they're not awesome you know what i mean like because right now it's 100 percent. I think, I think we're in the golden era of content creation i think I was saying earlier on, you know, like I said, like there was there was the mini game window of where there was a very particular kind of content and there was a really weird social, not etiquette, there was just a really weird social vibe among content creators. And there was a lot of like disingenuous people or 
people that were being genuine, but they just genuinely wanted money. And <laughs> that was just kind of the way it went. Um, Cause like YouTube started out with gaming videos and it was no money to be made or making it for the passion. Then the money came and suddenly there was all these people barreling in and they kind of made their big money and then they didn't have the creative drive to kind of keep it going. And like, they might still exist, but they don't have that same kind of number pulling as before. And I think we've really genuinely come out the other end of it where behind the scenes we're exhausted by those people. And I think the audience have seen true colors of a lot of people and people have been held accountable for X, Y, and Z. And I think we are just now in a position where authenticity is really shining through, which in a space where, you know, anyone could present themselves the way they are, it's so lovely that, like you said, anybody I've played with in the MCC, in the Discord calls or the Twitter DMs with your group chats for like training and XYZ, everyone is basically as they are on camera. Like we're all like less energetic, but we are <laughs> we are really one to one. And it's mm -hmm. it's so pleasant. And I'm so glad that I've managed to kind of weather the storm with my channel and remain here to actually enjoy what is now I consider the golden era of YouTube where people are experimenting and trying things and collaborating openly and not worrying about oh well, if i work with you then you might take my viewers like <laughs> we're just in a point where everyone just wants to make cool stuff and genuinely just have fun mm -hmm. um and it's it's great i love it i mean speaking I really of like it. like you said yes to being on this podcast like in an instant and and, oh, and, and like hobby, i yeah. i've like I, every time we've we've went to ask somebody i'm almost like why would they say yes? They're going to give up hours of their time and and nothing in it for them really and, and all this stuff. And I feel almost feel guilty about asking for people to be on the show knowing what they are going to sacrifice. And you didn't blink. Like immediately oh, no. No. just was like, yeah, I'm in. And I was like, whoa, yeah. that is so generous. It's really cool. <laughs> so thank you for, for, for that. Nice. It's sacrificing all good. Time today. Uh, I think, you know, as I said, like, oh, what's in it for you? Maybe, maybe there is something we could do because there is a chance that some of our listeners and viewers uh, have not seen your content. So why don't you tell them yeah. where to go, where to find you? We're going to obviously put links to your stuff in our description yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But like, tell them what you're up to. I, I know you mentioned the, the new, uh, not Green's Life series, but New Life is is, is different. Yeah, that's confusing, wax. right? Yeah. A little bit. It's, there's so many Life series, it's <laughs> wild. Uh, yeah, so basically for Minecraft content, which I think will probably be this audience's uh, sort of preference, um, you can just search in the little woods. So it's got an S on the end to be plural. Or you can literally just type in, if I remember correctly, I want to say it's literally just youtube.com forward slash at Martin. They've got those weird little handle things oh, now. Yeah. If you do at Martin, um, yeah, it takes you straight through to my Minecraft channel. And at the moment, I'm just solely uploading uh, the New Life series, which is basically a, a modded, um, I think it's a 119 SMP. Um, and just having an absolute blast with that. And then on every other platform, and even on YouTube as well, the username in the little wood, um, you can find me on everything else. So I've got the Fortnite channel, Minecraft channel, and then my Twitch at the moment is leaning very heavy Minecraft, but Twitch is very much a mixed bag for me. It's, uh, you know, whatever I feel like playing. Some days I'll be doing art, some days I'll be learning how to program for Minecraft and putting stuff into Bedrock or Java Edition. Um, I sort of use Twitch as my kind of like somewhat decompressed time because between spending time with the family, real life obligations and stuff, Twi like streaming on Twitch each day is kind of my two, three hour window to experiment or just kind of do personal projects and stuff. Um, just in front of so, yeah. know, hundreds of people, no biggie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn to code in front of a hundred <laughs> plus people or hundreds of oh, people. Oh, but like, they're what? so much smarter than I am. <laughs> I tried to learn like Unity and Unreal Engine and them trying to explain to me what a vector was. Oh my God, it was... <laughs> like pulling teeth for them i'm sure i could see them in chat getting genuinely infuriated <laughs> and you see more caps lock the longer it's going on um but no it's great i love having that back and forth with them and again it's that thing of me trying to just be just just me and being authentic and finding people who do like programming video games and again just trying to get that like-mindedness to kind of you know huddle together and we all have a little corner on the internet where we're just kind of chilling out and uh and just you know, having a vibe. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So let me let me end this uh, this segment with a, a comment and one last question for you. The comment mm. is to the audience. Um, I think we've driven it home that this is Martin, somebody you're you're going to want to check out. There's I've actually seen Twitter uh, polls come across where uh, the specific question of who is the best post production creator you know, and I'm and I, I always throw out Martin's tag. I'm like Martin, it's it's all day long. There's nobody can hold a candle to him. So if you're interested in what it is to not to see videos that are not phoned in and somebody who really treats it like a craft that they're 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 writing out of the blood coming from their heart, that's what <laughs> you're going on. So check out all the links that are going to be in the description. 
That's my comment. The question is this. We had a fun moment uh, earlier when I said, who were you 20 years ago? And it was it was interesting to learn about you. And now, who who's Martin 20 years from now? Where do you see all of this headed? Jeez. Uh, you know what? I genuinely don't know. On it, I really, hand on heart, I don't know. Like, I would love to do the YouTube thing because I think it affords so much flexibility and I can kind of like, you know, go down any kind of creative avenue that I want. I do imagine maybe in maybe like, you know, 20 years from now, I'll be in like my early to mid 50s sort of thing. Like the YouTube thing probably is a bit more of a young man's game by that point. Um, but I would love to maybe delve back into the radio stuff. I can take a lot of the skills that I've learned from doing YouTube. Like I've really gained a lot of life experience, like from departing doing radio to doing YouTube this past decade of my life where I've been doing YouTube, I've gone to so many conventions, met so many people, traveled to so many places. And that was one of the things when we used to do, uh, when I did student radio, they did almost like an X factor style, uh, thing called demo factor, where you would make a short demo reel of your radio presenting and show, and they would have some industry professionals critique it. And they said that the one thing they got across was that my production values were great. Like, the tone was right, but they said it just it's really lacking life experience. So now that I've managed to accumulate that and I've managed to brush up on those skills even more so, I can imagine 10, 20 years from now, I think maybe in the midriff between the 20 year mark and now, maybe I would become almost like a consultant for content, like kind of being like, that doesn't quite land. Let's put this here, put that there. Almost sort of step into more of an advisory role. But then getting back to being my own person and my own creator, yeah, I think maybe I would drift back towards radio or some kind of storytelling element where i can bring all this life experience and actually like you know almost make my my thing that will keep me remembered forever kind of thing I um it. i don't know what well, i don't know if that would be a movie or music or whatever else but it's yeah i'm going to kind of try and make something that will be the catalyst or the 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 relic Still in the creative space for sure that's, yeah that's very live. much so yeah Some, somewhere in that space absolutely yeah. like but that's that's what people uh like us are they just we have to be creating or we are out of balance you yeah. know we got to do it yeah i love that balance analogy by the way i heard you talk about it on the the previous podcast mm -hmm. about when you guys were in your first job and stuff and saying that you know the balance was off and <laughs> yeah that's i've i've had that moment too like being back in balance is super important yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I feel confident. I speak for both of us, along with everybody who's listening, that it's been a real privilege and a real honor to have this time with you. And just to echo what Impulse was saying, thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for giving us your time. It's been, oh, it's it's been no problem at all, genuinely. Yeah. I, uh, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah, it's been really great having it. <laughs> this is a good, really cathartic for me. <laughs> I'm sorry if my some of my answers are a bit longer, a bit deep, but I've like I've just started like going to therapy maybe like six, seven months ago, and I've just found that this open talking and this like this free dialogue. It's just I just I just think it's so helpful to me, but also for other people if they can resonate with it or if they can relate to it, they can recognize like patterns in how they can proceed to maybe help themselves as well. Yes, so yeah. it's, it's been really good. Yeah, I think it, it. When we created this podcast, we didn't know why, uh, you know, what, what we were wanting to get out of it. Really. Uh, we, we didn't have a direction at all. We just knew that we like sitting down and having conversations with each other and, and, and cover yeah. a broad spectrum of things. Like we didn't want to even pigeonhole our channel or our podcast into a specific topic. We leave it like wide open. Yeah. Uh, you've seen, like yeah. we talk about Minecraft Definitely. and then we talk about parenting and we talk about, you know, being idiots as kids and ghost stories and, and other random stuff. Like, um, but at the end of the day, what we did find, uh, fulfilling for us was seeing, how some things that we talked about our life experiences and stuff could actually impact others to make changes in their life for the better. And, yeah. and that became uh, sort of like a, uh, I don't know, behind the scenes goal of, of all this. It's not something we ever talk about, like how are we going to make this podcast impactful for people? Uh, we don't talk about it that way, but it just kind of like happens organically just because we're sitting here having real conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the, thing. I, that's the vibe that I got from the podcast. So I've not actually listened to it yet, but you mentioned one of the very early podcasts you did was the about like the just do it sort of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, listening to all the more recent podcasts that I've sort of um, tabbed into. And it's, again, it's it, the big thing with anything and everyone, regardless of if it's creative, if it's in your professional life, your personal life, like lean into your USP. It's a unique selling point. Like nobody can be you other than you. Don't try and be a chameleon and be like everybody else in the group. Be you and be un unapologetically you. So long as you're not doing it at the sacrifice of other people yep. and 
you know, being a detriment to others, like just live your authentic self and you're going to have so much life experience to share and so many fun times to be had. Like it's, it's so important. It really is. Yeah. That was like, well said, man. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> but that's what this podcast has been for me. Like hearing you guys talk about stories from way back when and how you kind of face, you know, adversities or, or feeling off balance stuff and then finding a way through it. Like, yeah, it's, it's great. It's really, really oh, good. Thank you. I love what you guys are doing here. Thank you. Yeah. When we talk about 10, 20 years from now, I mean, obviously we hope we'll still be, <laughs> still be uh, relevant and doing podcasts and stuff. We'll see. Yeah. 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 That's our goal anyway. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for, for joining. We'll, we'll wrap things up. No and, worries. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it. Your time. Yeah. Thank you so right. much. See you again.